it's Ryan Chernichan with Remax, your friend in real estate. I think you're going to really love this one. It's all about buying investment property in the Lower Mainland, so stay tuned. So investment properties, there's so much to talk about. So today I hope to explain and go over some things that might sound obvious, but I'm going to go over those things in more detail. But I'm also going to talk about some things that are not so obvious. And in fact, there's six things that I'm going to go over today that all relate to buying investment property. For this video, I'm going to focus on condos because buying investment condos are something that might be a first step for many people jumping into that investment realm, becoming landlords, that sort of thing. So today we're going to focus on condos. Perhaps in the future I'll do videos on uh, maybe detached housing, but let's... Uh, Let's get into it. Let's talk about it. So the number one thing in buying any real estate over the years, and I'm sure you've heard this before, is uh, location, location, location. That still holds true today, but it's sort of 1A and 1B now with something else, which is timing. And I'm going to talk about timing a little later. So perhaps one of the most important things with location in regards to rental condos is the proximity to major public transit. And I'm going to focus that idea on SkyTrain or rapid transit. I did a little bit of research and Vancouver actually stands out in the entire west coast of North America as one of the cities which has the highest percentage of transit users. If you want to talk about numbers, the statistics released in Business Vancouver, which was done back in 2015, detail that Vancouver has an overall percentage use of rapid transit of 20%, meaning 20% of all people in Vancouver uh, at one point will take transit. Now this seems small, but when you compare it to other major cities in the west coast of North America, that's actually the highest. That's higher than LA, San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, and Calgary. That's amazing. Of all of the lower mainland, Metrotown had the highest percentage of use. Business Vancouver states that 52% of employed residents of the metro town area take rapid transit. Burnaby is pretty expensive compared to many other areas of the Lower Mainland. Well, of course, Burnaby is one of the areas that is uh, outside of Vancouver, but is the closest to that downtown core, so those prices are still fairly high. One other area that I'm going to pinpoint here as an option is Wally. That's King George and, and 104th, that's Central Surrey. Well, welcome to Wally. Now, as you can see behind me, you've got the SFU campus and you've got several cranes and buildings being built uh, at the moment. Now, I'm going to switch my exposure here so you can check out the background. There you go. There's all the cranes and the buildings. Uh, as I said earlier, there's 29 different developments going uh, up for construction in the very near future. I'm going to move my camera over a little and there you can see the uh, SkyTrain station. So you've got a heavy population of students and you've got huge development going on in the area. As I said, this might be uh, a perfect area to jump into the rental condo market. The reason I'm suggesting that area right now is there's 29 major developments outlined in 2016 that will be built in the near future. They are revitalizing Wally in a very major way. Now, Wally also has a SkyTrain station. Not all of Surrey has p rapid transit SkyTrain stations. Prices on a per square foot basis for condos in Wally are going to be some of the cheaper condos in the Lower Mainland. It might be a really great area to 
jump into as a first time investment property buyer. One more area that I wanted to focus on, we've covered uh, Metro Town, highest use in the lower mainland of public transportation, Wally, which has got major development going on. Uh, the third one I want to just mention is New Westminster. Love me. Oh, I need someone to love me. Oh, I Uh, New Westminster is also under heavy redevelopment right now, also shares rapid transit. I just like New Westminster. I think it's a cool town. I think it's uh, trendy. I think it's quaint. I think it's got some unique characteristics. You certainly don't need to purchase an investment property in one of these three spots. There's many fantastic locations in the Lower Mainland. But these are just three areas that I wanted to highlight because they sort of adhere to my point of rapid transit being something you really need to consider when buying that rental condo. Parking. Now, parking is becoming more rare in this city by the day. It's becoming scarcer and scarcer. Developers are building up, and so they don't have as much land to offer more parking. So if you buy a pre-sale development condo, and it's a one-bedroom, you're probably going to get zero parking spots. If you buy a two-bedroom, you'll probably get one, and if you buy a three-bedroom, you'll most likely get two parking spots included. Now this is gonna factor in heavily, A, for your rental, but B, for your resale in the future. Keep in mind that although this city is relying more and more on public transportation, when you go to sell your condo in the future, you still need to appeal to the most people possible, and those extra parking stalls might be well worth it. So you may consider spending the extra money and getting those extra stalls. The third thing I wanna talk about are rental rates. Now when you buy a rental condo, you have the ability to raise your rent each year based on a specific percent that does change each year, and that percent is based on inflation. So each year you can go online, you can find the prescribed percentage increase that you as a landlord are allowed to increase the rent by. Generally speaking, over the last few years, that amount has been somewhere between three and a half to four percent. That's sort of the rate of inflation plus they they add a little bit to it. Now something to do with rental rates and something that I'm going to explain next which is um, item number four is something called a form J. And this is something that I don't think a lot of people know and this is one of those not so obvious things that I was talking about earlier. What is a Form J? Well, let me explain. When you buy a condo that has a strata, prior to December 31st, 2009, that strata had the ability by way of vote and if enough owners of the other condos in the building also voted in agreement, they could impose a rental restriction on the building. And what that means is the building, for example, might only at that point going forward allow 10% of the total units or condos in the building to be rented at any one time. Now many stratas do this because they feel like renters maybe don't treat the condo and the building and the property in the same degree that an owner would. And so many buildings took it upon themselves to create this bylaw of rental restrictions and therefore limiting the number of condos that could be rented at any time. So this is something that's really important. Prior to December 31st, 2009, the ability for a building to impose a rental restriction is there. By way of vote, they can do it. A developer, when they're building the building for the first time, building the building for the first time, yeah, right, as opposed to the second time, when they're building the building, they actually outline a time frame in which you as the purchaser are allowed to rent your unit out. And almost always, 
that time frame is 99 years. That is for buildings that are constructed after January 1st, 2010, which means if you buy a condo in a building constructed after January 1st, 2010, for 99 years, there's no way that strata council as part of that building can impose a bylaw restriction on rentals. In other words, allowed to rent it indefinitely until that 99 years is up. So that's extremely important. Not a lot of people realize that. So when you're looking at a condo to purchase as an investment and you want to rent it out, you can purchase a condo pro that was built prior to December 31st, 2009 that allows full rentals and that's fine. But just know that in the future, that may change. If you buy a building after that was constructed after January 1st, 2010, then you're safe uh, for a very long time and you can rent that out uh, most likely for the length of time that you own that condo. Now, number four is something you might want to consider should you, in fact, purchase a condo. And that is when you're a landlord and you do find a renter, you need to have them sign a lease agreement or a rental agreement. Something you may want to consider is something called a term certain lease. What a term certain lease means is that there's a set time frame in which those tenants can occupy the space and unless it's renegotiated prior to the end, those tenants must move out. The reason landlords do this is one of two reasons. A lot of people think that it allows the landlord to increase the rent once that term ends higher than the prescribed rate of inflation would be. Well, if rental rates are rising so quickly, higher than the 4% rate, which in fact they are, as of 2016, um, the report that I dug up on rental rates, which was put out by the Metro Vancouver, suggests that rental rates last year, 2016, for uh, Metro Vancouver actually increased 6.4% rather than the rough number of 35 to 4 So a landlord does have the ability to raise that rent higher than what they could and I'm not suggesting that that's the best way to do it. I'm just saying that a lot of landlords do take that route because of the rate that these rental rates are moving. What you may want to consider as a landlord is to actually underprice your rent by a little bit, ensuring that you get quality tenants that are willing to stay long term. If you have very high rentals, uh, rental rate, you mu that might lead to a higher turnover of renter uh, because they might find something better, cheaper somewhere else. Really what the term certain lease does is it allows you as the landlord to lock in a tenant, if you will, for only a very certain amount of time, a set time frame. And what that does is it allows you to judge and vet the quality of that tenant. So for example, you might rent your space or your condo to someone that looks like they're going to be a fantastic renter and they're going to treat the property with respect and they're always going to pay their rent on time and et cetera, et cetera. But six months in, you might realize that that's not the case and these weren't the people that you thought you were renting your condo to. This term certain lease allows you as the landlord the ability to remove them as tenants on a specific day uh, unless again you and them renegotiate for another term. So that's something you can keep in mind is a term certain lease. I said at the beginning that location, location, location has always been the biggest aspect of purchasing real estate. And yes, it is, but it's also timing. I think in the last 24 months, anyone who lives or, or owns property in the lower mainland can agree that we've had some very turbulent times over the last two years. We've seen all time highs in property prices all over the lower mainland. Things change very quickly. In the middle of 2016, we were seeing properties increase their price by ten, fifty thousand dollars dollars uh, almost weekly because some other property had sold just prior for some huge amount of money and so therefore everyone else attempting to sell would raise theirs in accordance. We are currently sitting at an all-time low in supply. In fact, the supply is so low, we haven't been to this level since 2003. 
in conjunction with that, purchasing a detached home here in the Lower Mainland is still benchmark price somewhere around one and a half, 1.4 to 1.5 million dollars. That is still unattainable for many, many, many people. Very expensive detached homes and very low supply sort of forces people to look at condos and townhomes as investments or as places to live. That's just the nature of the market we're in. So I think location is a big one, but I think timing is equally as important now than it's ever been before. So I've gone over some uh, really great points here, I think. But I also want to talk about... Think to myself What a wonderful world What a wonderful world